Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to Facebook Live. <laughs> I'm at a restaurant. I don't know where I am. I'm from the Cayman Islands. I'm, we're at lunch, and so I decided I, I would do it now because it's 12 o'clock. Lily's caught. Lily, it's working fine. I got it. I need to use Chrome, okay? <laughs> and you're live. And you're live on Facebook. Goodbye. <laughs> anyway, so. I'm, First of all, I want to wish everybody happy holiday. We'll be back next week, so it's not the end of the year. But I was here at, at a meeting. To my hair, I went swimming this morning, and my hair is so screwed up. Uh, but anyway, um, so this week's talk was on MSK trauma, and I just wanted to cover just a couple of things. So one is, is interesting. I saw two articles published, sort of the in-press articles, talking about the role of 3D imaging in trauma for acetabular fractures and for calcaneal fractures. And both articles said that 3D makes a big difference in terms of accurate staging and patient management, which is kind of interesting because we said that like 25 or 30 years ago. Not that I'm trying to uh, say anything to refer to those articles, but I think it's good that people are really paying attention again because one of the things that people are not taking advantage of is whether it's with standard volume rendering or whether it's with cinematic rendering, the ability to look at trauma. And for the orthopedic surgeons or referring physicians, and truthfully for the radiologists, it's really critical to be able to not just say there is a fracture, but extent, staging of the fracture, and determining management. So that becomes very critical. By the way, you see how you, and your hair blows on this is because it's windy, I'm right by the water. By the water park, I was gonna film from the water park, but I figured that'd be a bit much. I'm sitting next to Max. Max, you want to say hello? All right, forget that. So anyway, um, we. So one of the things we, we've spoken about is is basically how to do the rendering. So I think one of the critical critical things with musculoskeletal trauma in general is really knowing what you're looking at, knowing the type of trauma you're looking at. Because if you're just doing a regular ankle for for a fracture or a tibial plateau, if it's typical trauma, someone fell or something. Uh, you don't need IV contrast, but of course, if you have gunshot wounds or stab wounds, ballistic type injuries in general, then the importance of using both uh, IV contrast as well as the importance perhaps of using dual energy becomes critical. Many people, I know, Jan Fritz has written some articles about. Uh, what? You're, you're doing there. Okay, here, come here. So Max can now say he, on his CV when he applies to high school or elementary school Hi. that he was on live, it was live TV. Okay, just sit here, don't say anything. Grandpa, yeah, from, from, from. why, why is talking right there? Why, why is talking? Okay, Max, <laughs> don't help. Okay, so the thing is that uh, what you really want to do is really understand the protocol. So if you're going to do thin sections, and you do contrast. Some people will also say dual energy is really good. Looking at tendon injuries can be very valuable. So again, the protocol becomes very critical and the post-processing becomes very critical. See, Lidiana says hi. And she says, hi, Max. And then Mark DePaulis from GE up in Boston, I think, Mark. How are you doing? Um, so um, see, other people say you're cool, Max, but that just don't help. You do help I'll take my computer while I'm talking. Um, so one of the things, of course, really is those protocols. In terms of uh, slice thickness, we always like to do less than one millimeter. So depending on your skin, a 0.75 by 0.5 works really, really well. So I think uh, that's a really good way of doing it. Okay, so I think that then the post-processing works really, really nicely. Um, and, I, and I think you want to do that. The other thing in terms of trauma, and I think in terms of decreasing radiation dose is being able to do the right protocols in terms of often not having to go back. So one of the things people have written a lot about is if you're doing abdominal CT, chest CT as part of trauma, you don't go back and rescan the spine. You don't go back and rescan so you have additional dose. What you simply want to do is just do the reconstructions over. So in a sense, you would let's say do chest abdomen with IV contrast, then you would go back in, then reconstruct targeted images. I also would make the comment that if you do targeted images, let's say of trauma, of the spine, and we've spoken about this, make sure you reconstruct full field of view because if you're only concerned with trauma, 
and skeletal trauma, the chance of you having other vascular injury or solid organs, aorta, any type of soft tissue injury is very, very real. So you want to make certain that you're really doing all of the imaging uh, regardless of how you do the protocol. So I think that becomes very critical. The other thing in terms of trauma, I mentioned dual energy. There is a lot of work now. That, as I mentioned, Jan Fritz has written a little bit, but is how do you look at the tendons? Can you look at tendon injury? Can you look for meniscal injury? It's a lot of work that really goes, a lot of thought processes that revolve around there. And there was some work at RSNA this year looking at that as well. Um, to me, on the trauma setting, the biggest advantage of dual energy, perhaps, is also to look very carefully at being able to remove the, uh, the, bony, the bony structures when you're doing the vascular map. The other thing people have published with dual energy, very similar to MR, is being able to um, be able to do marrow injury. So people talk about marrow imaging. There was just an article looking at marrow imaging with multiple myeloma, which is really where the biggest app comes into play. But I think what you really would also people look at bone edema, and typically bone edema from trauma is something you look at MR. So the question is, patient has pain, they had trauma, is there bone edema present? Um, it has some impact on management depending on the scenario, but what you could do is use CT for looking at marrow injury as well. And that's been written up not quite the extent that perhaps you'd want to see it, but it is being written up. So I think that's there really is a reasonable uh, reasonable way of doing things. So I think that also is, is important. Um, the other thing in terms of trauma would be to, uh, uh, you know, really consider in the ER setting, you know, how you, again, I mentioned the protocols, but um, when we talk about MSK trauma, I think there are many, many things you can do. Um, and um, I'm just being interrupted because they're being, they're being, they're being Max, easy guy. They're, 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 being, they're being fast. I'm going to move you over a little bit, Max. Hold on a second. Hang on, Max. Okay. Um, so I'm back. Solo here. Um, so, by the way, there's really good smelling pizza here now. And it's very hard to... Do a, do a lecture while you're, while you're you it's pizza? really good pizza, but what can I tell you? Right there. But, um, okay, so that'd be several things. Now, the, the other thing in terms of yeah. contrast and the giving contrast, I do pizza? like to image trauma in the arterial you phase. You don't need the so typically about a 25 really or 30 happy. second delay works out very nicely. Okay, so uh, that's pizza. one thing nice to do. Thing? Uh, people always ask about the chance of venous injuries, and people do make the point is, why don't you do arterial and then do venous? I think, again, it's the dose issues, and typically venous is not an issue, um, but if it does does happen, then maybe you want to do it. I'm going to end that. This is a, uh, an almond, so now I'm eating live on TV. It's uh, a pretty good uh, almond. Uh, it's, not almond. Yeah. it's a walnut or something like that. I don't know. It's some kind of nut. Thank you. You know you what else I got to share with you? Tuna. This nut is very spicy. You want some tuna? Hold on a second. That's some badass peanut. You never quite understand. You ever notice with peanuts? There's peanuts, then there's almonds, cashews. To me, it's all peanuts. Nuts is nuts. Okay. It's, not like, it's not a little bit like Larry David, but um, ignore the background noise when you at the restaurant. But I think that's really the main thing now. If people have some questions, um, I know people people often do this thing where they put their flag up. So I don't want to be rude. I, I, I don't know all the flags. But um, if anyone has any specific questions, it's probably a good time to ask them. So if you ask me then where, what areas we do trauma mainly, shoulder trauma, typically fracture dislocation, elbow is more when it's dislocation looking, looking for that regard. If you're looking also for um, wrist fractures, particularly carpal bones, high res works out very nicely. And then, obviously, talk about spine, cervical spine, thoracic spine, lumbar spine. 
SI joints, sacrum, femur is a very, very common application, particularly complicated femur with acetabular injury as well as iliac injury, um, tibia, distal tibia, distal femur at the knee, ankle injuries, particularly carpal, frame fractures are all things we need to really look at. So I think those are, those are really good ways of thinking about um, thinking about trauma. Now, um, someone is asking me, how's the weather? So the weather, this is the Cayman Islands, the weather's like 80 degrees, but I have to admit it rained like crazy this morning. Uh, but now it's sunny out. So um, I'll be back working next week, so it balances out at the, at the end of things. Um, well, other things to, to uh, just let me go through a couple other things in terms of trauma. I have been doing more work with cinematic rendering now. The thing about cinematic rendering is you can do a really good job of the cinematic at the soft tissue. So that works out very nicely. So you want to um, try to do some cinematic. We published a little bit, Steve Rowe and uh, Jan's Fritz, but um, you know those people. I don't know who they are. But we are going to do some more um, over the coming year. So one of the things I think we're looking at is implications, the advantage of cinematic rendering, particularly looking at tendon injuries, looking at ligamentous injuries, and the like. So um, I know I haven't done my full time. Should VR be an essential evaluation? I think volume rendering, yes. And then cinematic, yes. I think it really... If you're going to do a, a case with CT, I think to me you really need to do the 3D aspects of the exam. If you don't do that, I think you're making a mistake and you're missing a lot of the opportunity. And again, it's the management issues. So that becomes very, very important. So with that, if any, no other questions, I think we'll call it a day. And I want to thank everybody. And um, again, as you're getting your holiday prep ready, hope you're having a lot of fun. And I'll see you next week. The guys at home, hello, bye.